The C-Wave Interference Locating System has three basic building blocks. The foundation of the system is built around the PC-TEL family of Seagull scanning receivers. They include any one of the current Flex series, which are shown, and also the legacy MX and EX scanners. Because of its lightweight and small size along with low power consumption and built-in hot swappable battery system, the IB Flex makes an ideal scanner for the C-Wave system. A separate battery pack powers the EX and MX Flex scanners with two hot swappable batteries. The second major component of the C-Wave interference locating system is a touchscreen tablet with the C-Wave software installed. The tablet runs on Windows 8 and above. Included with C-Wave software is a mapping program to easily download maps that C-Wave will use when measuring outdoor environments. The third and final major component is the host platform. The host platform provides an easy to hold grip and includes a mount for the touchscreen tablet, a built-in antenna preamplifier, a GPS antenna, a compass, and an N-type connector for a directional antenna. PCTEL has several to choose from or use your own. A USB connection between the host platform and the tablet also provides charging to the tablet. Connections to the scanner and its battery, which include RF, GPS, power, and USB, are also provided by the host platform. A soft touch stylus makes operating the touchscreen easy to use. This is an assembled C-Wave system. The scanner and its battery will typically be placed in a backpack. Along with the previously mentioned cables between the host unit and the scanner, there is also a strain relief that gets attached to the scanner. This is to prevent damage to the delicate GPS and RF cables in the event that the full weight of the scanner is felt on the cable assembly from the host unit. If using an IB Flex, this pouch can be used in lieu of a backpack. To turn on the system, press the on button of the battery pack. After a few moments, the status light of the scanner should turn green. Make sure the rocker switch on the back of the host unit is also in the on position. If outdoors and with an unobstructed view of the sky, in a few more moments, the GPS indicator should turn green as well. With this integral battery system, the IB Flex is powered on with its front panel switch. It has two on positions. With C-Wave, the top position should be engaged, not the power save mode. Please note that C-Wave is designed from the ground up to work with a touchscreen tablet. For a better demonstration, this video is using a mouse as its cursor is easier to follow using the screen capturing software than our touches to the screen. If hunting for outdoor interference, a map should be loaded onto the system. To do this, open up the map utility. Once open, center the map to the area of interest. Choose and remember a folder to store the maps. There are 17 zoom levels, with level 17 being the most detailed. Choose the range of zoom and download. Depending on the size of the area, the levels of the zoom, and your internet speed, this could take a few minutes. Now that the system is turned on and the maps are loaded, it is time to configure and operate C-Wave. Open up the C-Wave application. The user is presented with six icons. If the icon is blue, it is selectable. If gray, it is not. C-Wave has the ability to save a session and later play it back. If there are saved sessions, this is what would be selected to play any of them. Select Detect Devices. A status indicator will appear and soon both the scanner and the host unit will be discovered. If it fails to detect the units, Make sure both USB cables are plugged in, the scanner's status light is green, and the rocker switch on the host unit is in the on position. If the scanner is not detected and the USB cable is connected, it is probably a driver issue. Examining Device Manager will show if the scanner is properly installed or not. Not all PCTEL scanners use the same device driver. Be sure to install the correct one. Once detected, 
information about the scanner and the host unit can now be found by selecting the now blue icons here and here. Select Start Session. This is the scan configuration screen. Choose one of the pre-configured settings that automatically set up the scan start, stop, and resolution bandwidth settings for any standard mobile phone band, or choose the wideband mode where you can set frequencies that don't necessarily belong to a mobile phone standard. Scrolling through the options, a band can be selected for either downlink or uplink. For example, selecting US Lower 700 ABC Blocks Uplink will automatically fill in these start and stop frequencies. This is the entire defined band and can be fine-tuned now or later if need be. One could elect to view the whole band, only the part of the band the carrier uses, which is only 10 MHz wide, or zoom into the interferer frequency. The carrier only uses 704 MHz to 714 MHz. The start and stop frequencies can be changed like this. If the interferer frequency is known, it can be zoomed in by using the center frequency and span method. The resolution bandwidth is automatically configured to the optimal setting, though it could be changed if wanted. For non-mobile phone interference, choose the wideband mode and select the appropriate frequencies. Here, let's select 500 to 510 megahertz. Two scans can be run simultaneously. Press the plus icon here and set the second scan. This is useful to monitor both uplink and downlink of the same band, or maybe two different bands if the interference is thought to be really wide. Press the gear icon for settings. This area is for setting preferences such as the working directories, including the map folder that must match where the mapping applications save the maps, colors, audio alerts, and antenna preamplifier settings. Often, the operator of C-Wave is tracking down interference in the same few bands every time an issue arises. Therefore, the ability to quickly recall common bands of frequencies is important. Here, both the uplink and downlink frequencies of a 10 MHz LTE channel are being configured. Pressing the Apply icon sends the configuration to the scanner and opens up the Spectrum chart page. From here, we can save this configuration for later use. Press the file icon in the upper left hand corner and select Save Workspace As. Choose an appropriate name. When C-Wave is open the next time, there will be the option to load a workspace, skipping the setup screen and going directly to the Spectrum chart page. When the Spectrum chart page initially opens, Scan 1's start and stop frequencies will be displayed. Scan 2 can be shown by pressing this icon. Notice the new set of frequencies. Going back to Scan 1, the scan can be started by pressing the play icon. There are two plots. The top will be a spectrum analyzer, while the bottom is a waterfall display. The waterfall display plots time from top to bottom and frequency left to right. This is similar, though opposite, of a typical waterfall plot from an E-node B where frequency is plotted vertically and time horizontally. Notice when scan 2 is selected, the scan has not been started. The two scans are completely independent and pressing play while scan 2 is shown would start this scan. The primary marker is automatically shown in the center of the spectrum analyzer display. It is important that this marker be placed on the frequency of the interferer being sought. Notice that the power bar shows the signal strength of this marker. It is important that this meter shows the power of the interferer when using other C-Wave features. Two optional markers are also available and are activated here. The two scans each have their own markers. They too can be dragged to the frequency of interest. The power level of each marker will be displayed. The power level is in either microvolts per meter or dBm.
Selecting this tab will display the frequency of the marker and the delta between it and the primary marker. Often, the waterfall display is used to capture the frequency of an interferer that is intermittent. Once that frequency is discovered, the waterfall display is not needed. The waterfall display can be turned off allowing the spectrum analyzer to be full screen. Other features of the spectrum analyzer are max, min, and average displays. If this signal at 712 MHz is to be located, it is useful to zoom in on it so that any changes in level can easily be seen. This is accomplished by sliding these two bars in towards the signal. Once set, pressing this icon will zoom into the new frequency span. Once zoomed in, the primary marker may need to be readjusted. If while setting up the display, it is desired to return to the initial setting, pressing the return icon will do just that. This is the record button. The session will be recorded if this is pressed for later playback. On both playback and record, it can be paused and then restarted. Pressing the square icon will stop the recording or playback. A mouse was not used while using C-Wave to locate interference. Therefore, this picture is used to simulate the touches to the tablet screen during the next demonstrations. While outdoors, locating a source of interference on a map is one of C-Wave's greatest strengths. It is important to have C-Wave's compass accurately calibrated. To do this, press the Infinity icon and press OK to start the calibration process. Rotate the host platform fully in all three axes. A percent complete indication will be shown. Continue to rotate until calibration is achieved. Once calibrated, C-Wave stores the calibration data and this procedure will not normally have to be repeated. If C-Wave is relocated to an area with a significant difference in magnetic declination, it should be recalibrated. While C-Wave has GPS lock, the compass will point true north. However, without GPS lock, it will revert to magnetic north. Of course, with any magnetic compass, direction accuracy depends on the environment. To simulate an interferer, one of four wideband outputs of a PCTEL Seagull CW transmitter is connected to a PCTEL mobile antenna. It is placed at the entrance of this cul-de-sac at the base of the stop sign. This is its location on a map. While outside in bright sunshine, it may be useful to enable the high contrast mode. Press the globe to load the maps to find sources of interference. In the manual mode, the antenna is swept in a large arc while monitoring the power meter. Pressing the red trigger above the antenna on the host platform while pointing at the interferer's maximum power will display the interferer's bearing. In the automatic mode, the antenna is swept in a large arc as well, but with the red trigger button pressed in during the entire arc. At the end of the arc, the trigger button is released and C-Wave automatically determines the bearing. Repeat this process for a total of three times in different locations. Please note the operator is using the IBFlex scanner and its belt pouch during this demonstration. Also, the polarization of an interferer is usually not known. Therefore, adjust the antenna's orientation to achieve maximum gain. After the third measurement, press the triangulate icon and the source of interference location will be determined to be within a polygon. This video has shown and demonstrated the C-Wave system and software with enough detail to get an operator up and running. However, not all has been covered. If additional help or clarification is needed, pressing this question mark will bring contact-sensitive help.
this question mark will initially bring up information about the system and pressing this question mark will reveal the entire user manual. For additional C-Wave information, other pc tail products and services, or support, send your email to the addresses shown or point your browser to pctel.com.